I bought the lease from 1985. I sold my flat in Notting Hill Gate and 90% of the value of my flat in Notting Hill Gate, I bought the lease on here, which was complete madness, but I'd had this fantasy about this house from that moment. I suppose I'm an, I'm an interior designer, but if you want further analysis, if you're a domestic interior designer, I suppose you make houses or spaces beautiful but livable. This house, obviously, it's by Sir Robert Taylor, built in 1755. It's got a very Georgian feeling to it. And I first saw a photograph of it when I was in New Zealand, because uh, David Hicks um, had the lease of it in the very late 50s, early 60s, and saved it from demolition. Almost 40 years now, I have spent probably every weekend that I ever can in this house. And it is the perfect, perfect ideal for me, for a single man, a wonderful Palladian room, a small kitchen and dining room, a small bedroom and bathroom, a guest house with two, which I created with two bedrooms of garden and lawn and formal formality that goes with it and there's no better views in the world. And I was born in the very south of New Zealand. And in my 20s, I spent years traveling the hippie trail, as they called it, in the early 70s, arrived in England, stayed in England, and there was no trajectory for someone like me from New Zealand who knew nobody, how you manifest your art. I worked in restaurants because I I had no qualification to do anything else. But then I always loved the world of antique furniture or pictures or anything beautiful. So I there had a stall in the Portobello at the same time. And then after that had a shop in Westbourne Grove selling anything that I could find that I regard as beautiful. And I met one day Mary Fox Linton, who was a very successful decorator at that time. She asked me to come and work in her shop, which I did. And that was, I was 32 or three, and that was my first job. This room is a canvas to paint. The glorious thing is it needs no paintings. The architecture itself lives. It has all those elements, the allegorical elements of Palladian architecture. So in this room, it has four busts on the wall, which represents the four ages of man, and they are busts of Roman emperors. And in the two alcoves, there would have been, I suspect, Adam and Eve or a shepherd and shepherdess. And I had this colour mixed by a very, very sweet friend at the time called Elizabeth Wynne, who was a very well-known decorator. Her aunt was Nancy Lancaster, and it was a colour that Nancy Lancaster used to have in the hall at Kelmarsh. And it's successful to me because it, it's brown-based, it's not sugar-based, so it it, it's not plaster and it's not sugary Barbie pink, but it's a lovely, soft, Palladian pink if such a thing exists. One thing that was difficult with the room is the curtains. Never drop these, I just pull down roll of lines every night. They've always been the same style. It's a satin and then the taffetas, the white inside. And I always love white with it to, to brighten it, to lift it. They've always had the inverted pleat the very neat little bows, which make them look very like couture, and just the ruffled edges at the base. I've noticed that every room we do, there's always a good bit of clash somewhere. Pink and yellow is the best combination in the world. It can also be the worst. This chair is a classic John Fowler chair, and the painting is original Adam painting. I mean, it's divine. It's very pretty. I think it's the most elegant thing in the world. The sofa is one I designed, and it's meant to be with these broad arms to follow the shape of the bay window. I love, this, love, love, love this chintz, which is an old J.P. and J. Baker, revived by Robert Kime. The chandelier is, in fact, there's a wonderful company in London, which everyone uses, called Vaughan, who make the most wonderful reproduction. I can't bed, always undecorated. I usually want wallpaper, fabric, paintings. Well, the fabric is a French document and it's late 19th century. And when you look at it closely, there's so many colors all over it. There's like 
So you've got a colour behind, then you've got the, the pattern is that it looks like it's just a gauze, almost a veil, and then the flowers on top of that. But it's all just part of the print and a stripe as well. I mean, talk about they must have been on drugs. You've never got so much in one eyeful in your entire life if you look at it closely. <laughs> it's pretty remarkable. This is the um, dining room. When the house was built, this would just be an undercroft. It wouldn't have had windows. So David Hicks asked the local architect, someone called Raymond Erath, who was a genius. And Raymond Erath put in the Eau de Berth window. The window opens and hooks onto the ceiling and it is lapping on ship because you look right down the canal. So it's like a ship's cabin and it's like a ship's galley and it can do everything in it. The table's an old farmhouse. It's actually a wine tasting table from France. It's in fruit wood. I just polish it all the time, but don't treat it with any respect at all. It still looks fine 30 years later. On the chairs is probably our signature fabric. It's called Temple, and it's a bit like a Greek key. It's not, it's a play on the Greek key. There's a lovely painting by Maggie Hambling who's a wonderful British artist who I know. The one on the right is a great friend of mine, Gareth Devnell-Smith, one of his little collages. So again, they're um, just a collection of things that I love and buy. What I did with this space is I made the doors into shutters. So when I'm not here, I close the shutters and inside I put a pair of French windows. So the whole point really was to be able to sleep here and look down the canal. And upstairs, I put in a full bathroom of a bath and a separate loo and a wash hand basin. So it's a little self-contained ship's cabin really um, with a full double bed down here looking down the canal. It's my fabrics on the curtains and the headboard, and then lovely Indian miniature pictures around. I mean, there's not very much that you can do. So I just like it being very, very simple, almost Scandinavian in feeling, because um, it is what it is, what it is, what it is. <laughs> and uh, you can't do anything about it. The ideal of Palladian architecture was a wonderful building in a landscape. It wasn't about gardens and adornments. So in this house, I have hedges, which besides uh, defining the landscape, give me an opportunity to have secret gardens that aren't seen when you look at the external of the house. I've always had a thing about dahlias. I planted these dahlias, it must have been about 1990. Judith, who looks after the garden for me, always puts um, lots of manure over them so they're kept warm. And um, I just keep on coming back every year. It's the best value in the world. Those, I mean, I'd say for almost 30 years, have just repeated to look like that every single year. Madness. We're now in uh, the little guest annex. It was probably built as or converted as dog kennels at one stage when there was probably a bigger estate in the hunt. David Hicks made two bedrooms out of them. So they're very modest little rooms, but they're perfectly comfortable, they're centrally heated, and they have everything you need. Whenever, in my opinion, you have a guest room, you should try and make it a little bit romantic and a little bit different from the norm, because hopefully as a guest, you're there for a few days, and it's a treat as opposed to day-to-day -day life. So this is an old Swedish bed I've had for years. Usually I can't bear bed covers, so I love beautiful blankets, crisp sheets and pillows, and then usually essentially a night of down or a, a throw on the bed because there's nothing nicer than an afternoon nap with just a throw or a night of down. In the other room, there are a charming little pair of old hospital beds as a pair of beds and this just being a double. So, and then I just use it, the walls as a repository for all the paintings I've got nowhere else to hang. So there's some, some by my sister Sarah, there's sketches of my, one of my old apartments, and just a complete mishmash of things that I love and they look nice on the walls. All 
thought, I love geraniums so much. I wanted greenhouses for my geraniums. And that, so I bought very inexpensive greenhouses and I dug them down in the ground so you don't see them from the house. And I love them particularly in the big room. I especially grow this color pink, which looks lovely in the pale pink of the room. I mean, there's nothing nicer than a Sunday morning fiddling in the greenhouse with the geranium. So it's a very lovely thing to do. And um, they're very therapeutic. But there wouldn't be ever a moment when I just don't love it. And I've loved it so much all these years. I mean, and I, when I think back on my life and all my career, I don't think I could have the career I had unless I used to retreat here most weekends. And the lovely thing about being here, I love walking. So it's always about walking, always about the dog, always about having friends to stay. I've had weddings, my nieces wedding here, my parents, great birthdays here. So it's been a great place of celebration for lots of occasions in my 40 years, but it's also been that wonderful place of meditation, retreat and appreciation. And it still is only about appreciation because to live in with this view and in this place that appears to be untouched by the rest of the world is pretty rare.